So welcome to the Strength Culture for today's video where we're gonna be discussing the two biggest rocks when it comes to squat performance and squat technique and how you can better focus your sort of mental cues in order to greatly improve the performance of your squat and have the most efficient squat possible, obviously to make the heaviest squat possible. So today we've got Charlie here. Uh, we've got an unloaded bar, so I'll talk through that as the examples start to come about. But the biggest rock with all squatting performance and deadlifting performance for that matter is the relationship in which the rib cage and the pelvis are in and the, how they are sort of articulating together and the position they're in whilst you're moving through your actual squat. So if Charlie unracks the bar here, the biggest issue that we see when we get new assessments that walk in through the door here in Melbourne and also through our online client stream um, is that everyone likes to favor an extension bias. I've talked extensively on extension biases with strength training and how it's uh, more harm than good. But for the most part, a lot of people come in and they can't actually control the relationship of their pelvis in their rib cage, meaning they sit in extension. So Charlie's in that position right now. And then as he starts to squat down in that position, He's gonna jam up at the front of the hips. His lower back's gonna take over as he comes through the concentric phase. His depth is gonna suffer as a result. He might even get some neck issues as he's driving global extension through the spine. So the first big rock, and by far the biggest rock of all squat performance, is setting the correct relationship of the rib cage and the pelvis. Uh, Chris Duffin talks about the open and closed scissor approach, where if we draw a line of the hips and a line of the rib cage, we should have parallel lines. And when we've got open scissors, we've got an extension position. So if you go to open scissors, so extend the back, there we go. So now the scissors, those lines are pointing open. And if we go to a closed scissor, if we go too far the other way where we're rounded and flexed, those lines are not parallel. So we need to find a place where the hip crease and the rib cage make parallel lines to each other. And then the goal for your squat is to maintain this as best you can. So as Charlie moves down in his eccentric portion, he maintains his neutrality and then he comes up and finishes in that neutral position. If we stop Charlie at any point in the squat, hold at the bottom there, so come back down, hold at the bottom, we can see that those lines have not lost their parality. If he comes a little higher up, he maintains it the whole time. The biggest issue with people that find a neutral position at lockout is that when they come out of the hole, they use their extension bias to get themselves out of there. So where they kick back, and then again, those scissors, those lines are starting to open up at the front. Cool. So that's the biggest, that's the first biggest rock, and by far the most important thing to, to take into consideration with your own squat performance. When you film the squat from the side, what you should be looking at. A neutral position of the ribs down, and the pelvis underneath. The second biggest rock is what's happening at the feet. Obviously the feet are in contact with the ground the entire time, so we need to pay attention to what the feet are feeling and the, the feedback it's getting from the ground throughout the entire squat. A lot of coaches overcue heels. I've done a video on that in the past, so I'll link that in the description box below. Here is the thumbnail. Um, overcuing heels can be the correct way to cue a squat. However, for the most part, uh, it's not really a great uh, generic cue to just throw out in, in case something is not working. If the bar's floating forward or if you're struggling to hit depth or any of that sort of stuff. There's other, other things at play that quite often trump cueing the heels. So if we get Charlie into position again, you're going to notice his first rock, the rib cage and the pelvic relationship is correct. He's going to be in a neutral position. And then for this Second rock that we're looking at, we're going to be looking at where the pressure in his feet is. So as he comes down and up through the squat, we know that the bar path wants to stay vertical or the, the goal of any big squat is to stay vertical with your bar path. Again, I've done a video on this. Here's the link. Uh, the link's in the description. Here's the thumbnail on why that might not be the case depending on your level of experience with squatting. However, for the most part, we're looking for a vertical bar path. The bar represents some form of the percentage of the mass being the bar and Charlie. So as he moves down into the squat, any movement of the barbell either forward or backwards is going to affect the center of mass of the system. So Charlie's goal for us is to maintain midfoot pressure. And midfoot pressure is pressure above the middle of your foot, just in front of the tibia. 
So if Charlie moves through his squat and is able to maintain the pressure of the midfoot, that means that the system is balanced over the midfoot. And if Charlie was to lose balance over the midfoot and come down and lose it forward, the center of mass as a result has rocked forward and that barbell moves forward. The whole system has lost its center of mass forward. So it's very important that you maintain the pressure over your midfoot throughout the squat. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, sorry. Uh, you can find us through the links in the description box. As always, happy lifting and welcome to the culture.